Hello, this is John Schweitzer at ACMA. In this short video, we will consider the impact of climate change on the composites industry, looking first at the current political and business climate, then at the industry as it is now, and then consider what the industry might do going forward. Here's today's report card on how the U.S. is doing on climate change. Our current trajectory gets nowhere near where we need to be. Even if we live up to the promises we have made, we still fall far short as a country. At the recent international conference in Glasgow, President Biden promised the U.S. would cut emission of climate warming gases in half by 2030. Businesses will have to move aggressively to reduce their impacts if the U.S. is going to meet this target. And mostly every U.S. company and industry of any size is telling the public they will do their part including General Motors, Boeing, Whirlpool, Schneider Electric, all significant users of composites. It's no longer acceptable to make generalized climate promises. Companies are expected to have science-based plans that clearly quantify where they are now, the changes they will implement, and the expected result. Our competitors are working together to communicate their commitment to reducing emissions. There is even a coalition of steel, aluminum, and concrete suppliers, as well as aviation, shipping, and trucking companies that promise to collaborate to develop best practices. And it's clear they have been working on this for some time. Two steel companies, one in the U.S., are promoting the availability of steel made using electricity generated from wind or other renewable resource. Again, companies are expected to contribute to solving the climate crisis. As part of their response, Manufacturers of end products, whether cars or airplanes or buildings or highway bridges, will look to their suppliers to be part of the effort. Here is a conceptualization of the climate impacts of material selections across the life cycle stages of end products. Longer term, consideration of impacts like land use and recyclability will be important, but the immediate focus is on climate and is likely to remain so for some time. Composite products, lightweight, non-rusting, durable, can be used to reduce climate impacts of end-used products. When judged by climate impacts, for example, a highway bridge that lasts twice as long before needing extensive maintenance provides a significant climate advantage. Today, composite products can be said to have lower embedded carbon. That is, manufacturing of composites likely results in the emissions of less climate warming gas than the manufacture of competing materials. But as we see with the introduction of the so-called no-carbon steel, that advantage may be very temporary. In any case, the immediate challenge is here. Our customers will be looking at the climate impacts of the manufacture of competing materials. And we have a problem. It's not that we emit more CO2 than steel, aluminum, etc., but that we have no data. Our competitors have been working on this for years and are much closer to providing quantitative science-based data on their climate impacts the changes they are planning to implement, and the resulting improvements if they can't do so already. Significantly, as companies and as industries, they are clearly focused on the carbon net zero goal. This handsome schematic is our map to the future. Don't panic, we will examine each part in turn. A life cycle analysis is the starting point of our journey. An LCA considers environmental impacts over whatever phases of the life of the product, from extraction of resources to disposal, that are within our scope. Since composites are used as components for cars and highway bridges, and for the most part are not themselves end-use products, our analysis will be cradle-to-gate instead of cradle-to-grave. That is, we will look at the extraction of gas and oil and mining of minerals to delivery of our product to the customer's gate. Our present focus is on climate change, and for now we won't consider other environmental impacts like water use, solid waste, and air toxics. A life cycle inventory provides the raw data that is applied to the facts of a particular manufacturing operation and product to derive the LCA. ACMA-sponsored preparation of an LCI for the manufacturing of glass-reinforced unsaturated polyester resin composite using several processes. The rules for gathering data for LCI and LCA have been changed recently to improve accuracy and transparency, but the 2012 LCI report ACMA commissioned is still likely to provide a useful starting point. 
Now we will consider use of our LCA for informing our larger customers making end-use products like cars, aircraft, or appliances. These are typically large, publicly traded companies that issue annual reports on their progress toward meeting environment, social, and governance objectives. These ESG reports include the status of the company's efforts to reduce climate impacts. As we've seen, General Motors, Boeing, Whirlpool, and Schneider Electric are among hundreds of companies pledging to meet or making progress toward what they are calling carbon net zero. Carbon net zero means that a product's total life cycle climate impact will be zero. That includes the supply chain, the use and disposal of the end use product, as well as the manufacturing of the product. U.S. regulatory agencies are working on standards for reliability and transparency of ESG reports, supporting the drive toward the science-based climate goals we mentioned earlier. The available draft global standards are likely to serve as a template for the U.S. standards. Of course, the reason this is important to us is that it is or soon will be important to our customers. To take one example, if General Motors is taking seriously its pledge to reach carbon net zero by 2040, then its supply base will have to go there too. Now we shift to consider the use of our LCA data for materials and products used for construction and infrastructure. For these markets, an LCA will be used to prepare what's called an environmental product declaration. An EPD is an estimate of environmental impact prepared to allow comparison of similar products. The rules for preparing an EPD are set forth in what is called a product category rule. PCRs are developed using a consensus process managed by a program operator following certain ISO guidelines. UL, NSF International, ASTM, and similar organizations offer program operator services for industries wanting to develop PCRs. EPDs are available for many products used in construction and infrastructure, including steel rebar and structural foam. Here's an EPD for composite utility poles manufactured by a Turkish company but we were not able to find any EPDs for composite products made in the US. Some members of Congress want to set up an environmental product declaration clearinghouse for construction and infrastructure products at EPA. EPA may also set up a rating system based on the EPDs to identify the relative climate impacts of the products. Some communities have already committed to use low carbon materials for construction and infrastructure projects. Now back to our roadmap. Whether or not we follow the map may significantly influence whether our materials are selected or not selected in important markets. We see several opportunities for ACMA and our CGI groups to tackle the climate change challenges. The first might be to validate our life cycle inventory. When prepared in 2012, the consulting firm used what were then considered acceptable methods but the rules have changed to improve accuracy, reliability, and transparency. And while we're at it, we should consider expanding the LCI to include carbon reinforcement and other resin systems such as epoxy or polyurethane. We might then consider preparation of model LCAs, possibly one for a compression molded automotive component and another for a highway bridge component. These generic analyses would provide models for member companies to prepare LCAs for their own products. They would also allow us to evaluate our current climate impacts and start planning how, as an industry, we will get to carbon net zero. A product category rule for composite products for construction and infrastructure will be required to allow environmental product declarations to be prepared by our member companies for their construction and infrastructure products. And using the generic LCA, we can prepare a model EPD that will inform preparation of EPDs by individual companies. As soon as we have some data and plans for our climate impact, we can follow the lead of our competitors and start communicating with end users and policymakers about the present and future climate benefits of composites. Thank you for watching this video. We hope this is the start of a long series of conversations to evaluate and take advantage of the opportunities presented in this challenging environment. Please let us hear from you if you have questions, comments, or concerns.